There's a common belief that our grandparents and great-grandparents had fewer cavities and better oral health compared to us today. Let's talk. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist here to bust a myth. Okay, so while it's true that our grandparents consumed less processed sugar and junk food, their dental health was not better. In fact, they often faced significant oral health challenges due to several factors, starting with one of the biggest differences, limited access to dental care. Dentistry a century ago wasn't as advanced or widely accessible as it is today. Preventative care, like regular cleanings and checkups, were not a thing. They were not part of most people's routines. Untreated cavities often led to tooth loss. Nobody was getting fillings and many people had dentures by middle age. Nowadays, when we have a cavity, we drill it and fill it and that filling can often last a lifetime. But back then, they would oftentimes just pull it. There were no fillings, crowns, stuff like that. Any tooth that was kind of bothering you, it was just easier to pull it. Also, nowadays people live longer, whereas back in the day, people were dying of many different infectious diseases and yes, tooth infections. Nowadays, it's very rare to die of a tooth infection Yes, it can still happen and it does still happen, but it's rare. Another major factor is fluoride. The widespread use of fluoride toothpaste and fluoridated water didn't become standard until the mid 20th century. Fluoride is crucial for preventing cavities and strengthening enamel. For example, the first community water fluoridation program in the US began in 1945 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, marking a significant advancement in public dental health. And for those who say other countries don't put fluoride in their water and they're fine, please know that is also based upon a myth. Many of those countries put fluoride in their salt instead. Public health fluoridation is still happening, they're just using a different source. References are all linked below. Back to this video. Back to the argument that our grandparents had better dental health due to their diet. Eh, here's the thing. Processed junk food wasn't as common in our grandparents' diets, sure, but their traditional diets often still had cavity-causing foods. Many were rich in carbohydrates and sticky foods like bread, potatoes, and dried fruits, which can linger on teeth and feed bacteria even more than a simple candy bar. I have a video all about how carbs are worse than candy for teeth, which I'll link below if you'd like to learn more. Additionally, oral hygiene tools weren't as effective. They just weren't. Early toothbrushes lacked the designs we take for granted today, like soft bristles or angled heads. Dental floss wasn't as widely used and interdental cleaning tools weren't available. If you knew how many of my older patients say to me things like, Whitney, if I only knew we had to floss our teeth when I was young, maybe I'd still have more teeth. You know, these advancements in home care have dramatically improved our ability to maintain good oral health and keep our teeth. Back in the day, people literally didn't know they had to brush and floss their teeth to keep them healthy. Many thought it was just for looks, for cosmetics. Today, we benefit from modern dentistry and increased emphasis on prevention and education. Regular dental visits, improved oral hygiene products, and public health initiatives like water fluoridation, although unfortunately controversial as of late, have all made a significant impact. I will link that video of mine below if you'd like to learn more. But overall, studies show that the prevalence of cavities and periodontal disease has decreased significantly since the 1970s. I mean, just look around. So many elderly people have missing teeth and or dentures, and that's just not a thing anymore. It's very rare for someone to need a full set of dentures nowadays, whereas back in the day, it was the norm. Prevention wasn't a thing. People were just trying to survive back then. After the war and after the Great Depression, they weren't worried about their teeth. They were worried about staying alive and having shelter and somewhere to live. And since things are much better now, we are able to focus more time and energy on healthcare prevention. It allows us to improve public health as well as individual health. That said, health challenges still exist. Nothing is perfect, of course. According to the CDC, about 40% of American adults have some form of gum disease, whether that's gingivitis or full-out periodontitis. And in older adults, age 65 or older, that number rises to 60%. While we've made progress, more people have their teeth, less people are losing their teeth at young ages. Maintaining oral health remains a lifelong commitment. Again, people are living longer and there's a lot of factors that go into comparing oral health back then versus now, it's very nuanced. But overall, the idea that our grandparents and great-grandparents had better oral health is a myth. They faced different challenges and many didn't benefit from the advancements we have today. As dental science continues to evolve, our ability to prevent and treat oral health issues keeps improving. Oral health is not getting worse, it's actually getting better. By continuing to focus on prevention, we're setting the stage for healthier mouths in the future for years to come. And speaking of prevention, if you're interested in creating the perfect 
oral care routine to prevent major dental issues and costly dental visits, make sure to click the link in the description or in the pinned comment below to sign up for my free oral care guide and discover all of the essentials for an effective oral hygiene routine. This guide is an action plan for preventing and maintaining a happier and healthier smile. And I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe and turn on your notifications if it did. And if you want even more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.